Okay, so welcome to part nine of Learn Go. And in this video, we're going to be going over slices. So slices, as we'll see, are quite similar to arrays. They have a few key differences that we'll point out as we go through this video. So let's just go ahead and start to define a slice and then we'll see how they differ from arrays and how they're uh, similar. So we'll say s, we'll call this slice s, colon equals, and we'll use this make function. And inside this make function, we'll give it the type, which in this case will be an integer array, and then three, which is going to be the size of this slice that we're defining here. So slices are similar to arrays, and one way in which they're similar is that you can index into a slice in the same way that you would index into an array. So we've defined a slice of size three, but we haven't initialized any of the values to anything other than just the zeros that this statement up here will make, just like an array. So we can say s of zero, let's say is equal to one, s of, let's say one is equal to two, and then s of three, let's set that equal to three, or uh, sorry, s of two is equal to three. So we can go ahead and say format.println s, and that will just print out the slice to the screen. And if we do that, we see an output that looks very similar to what you would do if you printed out an array of similar size and content. You just see the one, two, three, open and close uh, square brace. So one thing we can also do on a slice is we can run the, uh, we can access, we can access the elements of the slice in the same way that we did for an array. So for instance, we can say format.println s of zero. So this will give us the first element in the slice. So the first element in this particular slice is one. We can also run the len function, len function on a slice and that will give us the length or how many elements are in the slice. So format.println len of s will tell us how many elements, which we know to be three. So that's how many elements are in that slice. So one way in which slices and arrays are different is we can use the append function. So append function is unique to slices. And this is going to be similar to an append function that you may be familiar with if you're coming from a Python background, where if you run the append function on a list, if you have a list like one, two, three, if you append the integer four on that, then you're going to have a new list, which is one, two, three, four. So similar type of idea here in Go. So the way that we use the append function is Go is in Go, let's just say on the slice that we just defined, is we can say s is equal to append. Notice that it's a keyword, so it's highlighted. And we can feed it the thing that we're appending. So we're, append we're appending an integer onto s, and then comma, what, what do we want to append onto s? So what, what integers in this case do we want to append onto s? So let's say that we want to append four onto s. So the append function returns the modified slice and that is stored in this variable s and that will be updated to be a slice with now one, two, three, four. Let's just go ahead and verify that by printing the new slice or the updated slice onto the screen. So once we've appended four onto the previous slice, which was initially one, two, three, appending four, we get one, two, three, four. It's worth pointing out that we can also feed in multiple pieces of information that we wish to append onto s. So for instance, we can say s comma, let's say five comma six comma seven. So we can feed multiple entries here of things that we wish to append onto our slice s. So we can do that, go ahead and print it out to the screen. So print len s. And if we do that, we should see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one of the reasons they're called slices is because you can access the indices in this slice in a similar way as you would slice in a list in Python. So we could say slice syntax. So for instance, if I wish to access the entries at indices one and two, I can do format.println s of one through three. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to give me the entry at one, the entry at two, all the way and excluding this this index here. So it's not going to give me the entry at index three, which in this case would be four. So if I print this thing out to the screen, I should get the elements of the array S at index one and two as a slice, which is two and three. So let's just go ahead and verify that's what we get. So if we use that slice syntax, we get this two and three for this slice. So for instance, we can go a little bit more on this slice syntax as well. We can say format.println, uh, let's say S and then you don't have to give any number here. If you don't get any, any number on the left-hand side, it's just assumed that it starts off from the beginning. And we can say that we want all the elements in this slice from the beginning, let's say up to the index three. So up to and excluding index three. So we should get zero, one, two. Let's just go ahead and verify that's what we get. 
So we get oh, oh one two three since we started. Uh, so the slice starts at one two three, not zero. So one two and three. So that gives us all of the indices at zero one and two. So let's just go ahead and see another example just to make sure that that slicing uh, idea is clear. So we can say format dot print line, and we can say s. And if we don't specify a number on the left or if we do specify a number on the left and we don't specify a number on the right, so we're starting from index one and then we're going up to the end of the array. So if we go ahead and print that up, oh, sorry, the end of the slice. I may use, I may say array when I mean slice uh, just because I'm used to coming from a Python background or a C++ background. So excuse me if I abuse my, my terminology here. So anyway, we're going to print out this slice from starting from index one all the way up to the end. So that's going to include the end of the slice here. So starting from index one, which is starting from the entry at two. So we're excluding the first element of the slice and then we're going all the way up into the end of the slice. So that does include the last element there. So, okay, let's keep going on here. So we can also have a more concise way of defining slices. So we can say slice definition, concise slice def definition. If we know the elements with which we wish to put in the slice, we can say something like, let's call our slice T colon equals integer array. And then we can say open curly brace. And then we can say, let's say 100, 200, 300. So we have a slice that we've defined here with entries 100, 200, and 300 respectively. So we can go ahead and say format.printline T. We do that. Then we see our slice T printed out here with elements 100, 200, and 300. Okay, let's let's go ahead and experiment more with slices. Let's say that we want to define a new slice. Let's call it x, and we'll set this equal to s. So I'm basically defining a new slice here, colon equals, and I'm setting that equal to the slice that we have up above s. So remember, s is a slice that contains the entries 1 through 7. So let's say I want to go ahead and change the first entry of x to 500. So before I do that even, let's just go ahead and print out x to verify that it looks just like s does. So let's say format.printline x. Let's go ahead and see what we get. So we, we print out x and we get the elements one through seven. This looks just like s that we printed up above here. Okay, good. So now getting back to my comment, I want to change the first entry of x to the value of 500. So the zeroth index value of x to be equal to 500. So let me go ahead and now print out, let's say format.printline of x. So that looks all good. So now the first index entry of x is 500. The rest is the same. But what happens if I say format.printline of s? So if I do that, notice that s also now has changed. So after I made that change, I not only was it reflected in x, but it was also reflected in S. So we'll get to pointers later, but there's sort of a, a key idea with respect to pointers as to why this happens. But maybe this isn't the expected behavior that you want. So in this case, let's say you want like a separate slice that doesn't have anything to do with S, but you just want to initialize it to something that looks like S and then make your changes from there. In that case, you wanna use something like a copy. So let's go ahead and comment this stuff out here because maybe this isn't what we, what we expect or what we want. It's not our desired outcome for what we just did there. Maybe we just wanted the, to make that change to X and only have the change reflected in X and not have S be updated. So we can use, as we'll see, copy to prevent from changing both X and S. So in this case, we can say X, let's say is equal to make and then we can give it the type, so an integer array. And let's define this new slice that we're defining here equal to, again, we give it the type, and then we give it how many elements we wish to store in this slice. So in this way, I'm just going to say at length of S. So that's how many elements I want to store in this slice X. So I'm just taking the length of S, which in this case is seven. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that copy function that I alluded to in the comment. I'm going to say copy. Notice how the syntax highlighting highlighted that copy. And I'm going to say I want to copy x, s. So I'm essentially saying I want to take s and copy it into x. So now, now if I say x of 0 is equal to 500, and now if I say format.println x and format.println s, hopefully x 
the only thing that should have 500 at the start of it will be X and S will be just as it was when it was initially printed. That is the numbers one through seven. Let's just go ahead and verify that's the case. So indeed, we changed X. This is X up here. The first element of X is 500 and the S slice that we're printing out down here is unchanged. We're actually making a copy of that and then just changing X and leaving S alone. So just as you had multi-dimensional arrays, you can also have multi-dimensional slices as well. So let's look at an example where we have a 2D slice. And these are similar to arrays, although the lengths of in a slice may vary. So lengths of slice may vary. So let's take a look at an example with that. So let's go ahead and define a two-dimensional slice. So we'll call this double S colon equals make. This will be of type two-dimensional int. And then we'll say that the size, let's just say the size is also three. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a initial outer loop. So we'll say for i colon equals zero, i is less than the size, in this case three, i plus plus, open that up. And what we're going to do to illustrate that the lengths of a slice can vary is we're going to have this big slice and then each of the inner slices are going to get are going to essentially be small, bigger, bigger, and bigger. So we're gonna have something that looks kind of like this. So this is our slice, and inside are other slices, like that. So it's of size three, so we have three slices here. And so in an array you would have, if it was three and three, you would have three elements in this array, three elements here, and three elements here. But since lengths can vary in slices, we're gonna have something that looks like this. So one element there, let's say, maybe two elements there, and then we'll have, let's say, three, four, or five, something like that. So three elements there. So we're going to have a slice where the size of the elements on these inner slices are going to be variable. So they're going to vary. So inside of this inner for loop, we're going to define a variable we'll call inner length, and we'll set that equal to, let's say, i plus one. So let me just put this back because I think it's a little bit it's helpful for us to kind of refer back to that. I'm going to define this variable again because I deleted it to get that comment back. So inner length colon equals i plus one. So on every iteration of this outer loop here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to increase this variable that we're defining by one. So we're going to say i plus one in everything. So initially it's going to be equal to size one, size two, size three. So then what we're going to do is we're going to define the slice inside of this bigger slice. So we're going to define each of these inner slices. So let's go ahead and say S, S of I. So we're going to define the slice at index I in this 2D slice is equal to make. The type will be a one dimensional int. And then we'll say inner length. So that's the size or the length of this particular slice at index I in this 2D slice. So then what we're going to do is we're going to have a loop inside of this outer loop. So for j colon equals zero, j is less than inner length in this case, and then we'll increment j by one. So what we're gonna do in this is we're just gonna fill it up with something. So we're just essentially going to say the ijth entry of this slice ss is equal to, let's say i plus j. So that will give us something that kind of looks similar to this. So that's what that's going to do. So let's go ahead and print out, let's say format dot print line SS, print that out, save it, see what we get. So I, I miss, uh, let me just write this correctly. I think I misrepresented the comment here. So one, two, two, three, four, just to make it exactly what this prints out. Let me just go ahead and print that out again. So our slice here, our 2D slice is this thing right here. The first slice is of inner length one, and we're just storing that i plus j in that case is zero. The next slice is of size two, inner length is incremented by one in the first iteration of that loop, or the second iteration of that loop, I should say. And then we're just putting in i plus j, i plus j. And the last iteration, since it's only of size three, that will, the inner length in that case will be of size three, and that is the inner slice there. So I hope that example makes sense. If not, go ahead and, I mean, the code will be available so you can go ahead and download it yourself and play around with it to convince yourself that this is doing uh, something that justifies the output that you're seeing here. So with that said, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for slices. And if you have any questions or comments about what is covered, please don't hesitate to leave any comments in the comment section below. The code, all of the code for all the videos for this series and all my series are available on my GitHub page. And you can go ahead and download that. The link will be in the description to this video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.